first grade when he lied to me and told me the word gold was a cuss word, and I believed him. <laughs> now, I was informed last night at the rehearsal dinner that the four men gave my best man speech, he had four shots. Don't worry, I've only had eight. <laughs> for inviting me, for having me as his best man. There's nowhere that I'd rather be than standing by his side today. And Kristen, you look great. And Vince, you're really lucky. <laughs> now, like I said, Vince and I have been friends for a really long time, and I have to say I'm really proud of how close we've stayed over the years. I remember thinking on the last day of high school, this is it, you know, we might never live in the same city again. We we're going to separate colleges. You know, we had no idea where we'd end up, and guess what? We didn't end up living anywhere near each other, yet we're still such good friends. And I have to say, you know, I really look forward to uh, days like today, times when our friends can get together and create new memories, like some of the ones I'm going to talk about today. <laughs> now, I have great memories of Vince. Memories of sleepovers, jumping on the trampoline in his backyard, hanging out in his treehouse, sitting in his room, playing Donkey Kong and Nintendo 64, swimming in his aunt and uncle's pool, hitting at the batting cages at Grand Slam, the year we were on the absolute worst baseball team of our life, Vince was the pitcher, and we were 1 in 15. <laughs> I remember playing in golf leagues together, where I used to cheat and drop my ball every time Vince wasn't looking. I remember when his cousin Bobby used to take us to haunted houses every fall. I remember going on vacation together, in all those days, we spent in Jonas' basement playing Tetris and being really, really cool. <laughs> I remember the literally, not joking, thousands of hours we spent ranting to each other on our fantasy baseball message boards over the past decade. I remember all the trips to visit each other at college, trips home on the holidays that we still look forward to, where we all get to get together, and all, the most fun of all right now, the trips to Florida to visit Vince. Um, you know, I still remember the phone call from Vince to tell me that he and Kristen got engaged. You know, I asked him, you know, when did you decide to propose? You know, you didn't tell me about this. And how did you know that Kristen was the one? And Vince said, you know, I just knew I was ready and Kristen's the one and it's time for us to get married. Now, I have to say, I 100% agree with Vince's decision to get married. But I feel like it's my duty as best man to point out some of the other times that Vince didn't make the best decision. <laughs> so, Vince, I'm sorry if I'm going to embarrass you a little bit, and I'm really sorry for any of Vince's co-workers who are here. We're going to hear about some of the dumb things Vince did when he's growing up. So, going back to when we were a lot younger, Vince and Brian, who's here today, decided that they were going to give me a haircut in Vince's garage. So they started giving me a haircut, and as nice as Vince and Brian were to me, they decided, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. Well, guess what? My hair was half cut. So they went the and went inside. I was sitting in a chair, just kind of looking around like, oh, okay. We go inside, Vince's mom sees me, and she yells at Vince for not finishing my haircut. So we go back outside, and I have no option but to go back home and have my dad shave my head. <laughs> about midnight, we were hanging out in Joe's basement, and we decided, man, we really want a Slurpee from 7-Eleven. So we put our brains together. You know, this was back in like the early days of Google Maps. So we didn't really think, let's look up where the closest 7-Eleven is, because we all remembered, there's a 7-Eleven in Columbus that's only two and a half hours away. So we left Joe's house at midnight, drove to 7-Eleven, ordered a Slurpee, drank him in five minutes on the curb, drove back home. It was 7.30 a.m. Everybody went to bed. <laughs> Not a very good decision. <laughs> I remember going to visit Vince in college. Uh, we'd all been drinking. We decided it would be awesome if we all wore Hoover shirts out to the bars in Miami. So there were five guys wearing cut off Hoover t shirts. We drank a lot. Honestly, I don't remember that much of the night. So I apologize. But we went back to Vince's house and we decided that we're going to go through his kitchen and take all the food in his cupboards and throw it onto his neighbor's roof. So I have, honestly, a hundred pictures of us taking like, ramen noodles out of Vince's cupboards and throwing them onto his neighbor's roof. And I have pictures of the next morning. Their cars were parked outside. Pictures of 
to the shingles of Judge Avery. There's one of the syrup bottles. Honestly, one of my favorite memories. Um, one of the other best things Vince did, that a lot of people in this room were included in, and I apologize to Joe's mom, who's in the crowd tonight, I'm sure she knows about this, but I feel like I still owe her an apology. We used to light off fireworks inside Joe's basement. <laughs> in house. We'd light them off, it didn't matter, oh, burning the carpet, it doesn't matter how much you the smoke, it doesn't matter, right? Joe's mom's pretty easy going, she won't care. We were all involved in that, and honestly, Vince was kind of leading the charge a little bit, so... Um, Ms. Mrs. Lawless, I apologize for that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just going to go on. I could go on and on for hours, but I have two, I have two really good memories left to share. Um, in high school, we used to take a video camera around with us, and we used to take funny things that we did. So, for example, one time we glued quarters on the floor at the mall, and we videotaped little kids kicking at the quarters trying to pick them up. So that was pretty innocent, right? It was funny. Well, one time we decided it would be really funny if we would fake a seizure outside, outside of the store in front of everybody. We got some alka seltzer tablets and we drove up the borders on the strip. Joe puts the alka seltzer tablets in his mouth, falls down on the ground, then just runs around pointing. Oh my gosh, no, my friend's having a seizure! Help me, help me. Meanwhile, the people at borders were having a little concert inside. So we're up against the window, they're all looking. People run outside. I was in the video or in the getaway car holding the video camera. We all run in the car and drive away. And I don't even want to know what happened next. But I'm guessing all the people at borders weren't happy. Uh, my last favorite story of this, this is my all-time favorite story, and it happened when we were in Little League together. Um, a lot of people in this room were on this team. I mentioned earlier that we were on a horrible baseball team. We were 1-15, in 15. Vince was our pitcher. I remember they tried me out for the pitcher, I beat the coach three times in a row, and I never got to pitch again. So that's just kind of setting up how bad this season was. Well, one day after a 20 to something loss, um, one of the other players on her team's grandma came into the dugout. And she started screaming at us. She said, she's probably 65 years old, mighty, and she said, you guys are a bunch of wusses. I've never seen a team like this. What are you doing out there? And nobody ever insinuated this, but she brought, you think because I'm a woman I can't play sports? Nobody ever said this to her. She goes, I'll wrestle any of you right now. We were scared. We were 13 years old. We didn't know what to do with it. But Vince couldn't hold it in. He was sitting in the dugout, kind of cowering, hiding his face with his hat, and he was laughing. She looks at Vince and says, you! Get up here right now and run with me. So she's chasing Vince around the field as he runs from foul pole to foul pole, barking at him about how much of a wuss he is. Now, I admit it was funny, but Vince, you probably shouldn't have laughed at that. Now, you know, I've talked a lot about Vince. I haven't talked a lot about Vince and Kristen yet. And if there's one thing that I can say about them as a couple that's really similar to my wife and myself, it's that we're all lightweights. Now, I'm not talking about how much we weigh, I'm talking about how much we drink. <laughs> you know, after three or four drinks with all four of us, things start to go south fast. <laughs> so if I tell you guys that on Kristen's 21st birthday, we decided that we would take her out to a bar, buy the 85-pound girl five shots, <laughs> and challenge her to drink them in five minutes, she did it. Believe it or not. So, I don't know if Kristen remembers this night or not, but I remember it pretty well, and I feel like it's finally time to say I'm sorry. <laughs> um, honestly, I've embarrassed embarrass Vince about 15 times with stories about drinking, but I feel like he's had enough. So, on a more serious note, I'd like to say that, you know, I've been lucky enough to watch Vince and Kristen's relationship evolve over the years. For uh, the first three years that my wife and I were together, we lived in different cities, just like Miss and Kristen. And I, I know firsthand how hard long-distance relationships are. Distance really tests a relationship like nothing, like nothing else. You know, for years, Vince and Kristen endured trips from Oxford to Cleveland, from Canton to Cleveland, from Canton to Florida. And it really wasn't easy. You know, every weekend came with a sad goodbye, and it was hard. And today, you know, we're here to say to them, it's over, you guys are together, and you pass your test with flying colors, and we're all very proud of you. There are no more goodbyes. Today we're here to celebrate your relationship.
Uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. And I have a special message for Vincent Chris. You guys are now married. You can breathe a sigh of relief. You don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. anymore to bike, to swim, to run. You can stop running races, stop with the triathlons. You're married. It's time to let yourself go. <laughs> Raise, raise their glasses to Vince and Chris. Cheers! Cheers. Cheers.